So today, uh, I just want to welcome you to organizational management once, once more. And uh, we'll be looking at uh, change and managing change, an important topic within the context of managing organizations. So this is this is really an exciting topic, so one that uh, everyone, pretty much everyone can, can relate to because of the practical relevance and application it has for organizations. And, and even at micro level as well, organizational management is much more relevant and uh, much more practical as well. So I'll be covering these issues uh, relating to my and uh, organizations within within that particular context. So what are we going to do? So the, the lectures today is divided into two parts. So the first part, uh, the learning outcome is really for us to look at how we can understand some of those basic characteristics of organizations and to look at some of the triggers of, of, of change uh, within a wide range of organizations and we'll also try to understand or, or the, the concept of organization as a system um, operating in a multi-dimensional environment. So we'll look at that, we'll look at the implication for understanding the causes of organizational change. So that will be the, the part one. And then of course we'll also try to analyze the, the level of turbulence in, in organizational environments as well. That, that being said, so the question is organizational change. Uh, what is change, right? So change is becoming uh, a defining feature of organization. It's be becoming an important integral aspect of every organization. So why does it really matter? Why should we be looking at how should we manage change within organizations? And the pace of change is so rapid. It's accelerating very quickly. And, and because of the increase in global competitions, deregulation, changes in employment trend, big data, um, data analytics and, and artificial intelligence and cloud computing and so many different trends that are happening within the business environment is causing organizations to adapt. There's a whole lot of disruption that is happening across different range of sectors. So what that means is that, it, that there is the necessity uh, those necessity creates the the importance for for management uh, uh, to 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 look at ways in which to deal with this, and whether you're making uh, plans for for the features uh, of the organization. So you want to look at ways in which you can navigate, ways in which you can deal with these changes that are happening within the business environment. So organizational change creates that important opportunity for organization to grow and prosper if it is managed appropriately. And of course, I think another thing that I need to emphasize is the fact that an organization grow and evolve over time and, and they have to continuously try to reinvent, readapt, look at their strategies, look at their structures, look at the people within the organizations and the culture of the organizations to adapt to the market environment, to adapt to what is happening in the business environment. Now, what do we mean by organizational change? This basic definition is the one way to look at this is to look at it from the view of uh, process, from a process point of view. So we can define organizational change as the process by which organizations implement modification to their strategy, to their structure, to their resources, people, attitude, culture, uh, within within the organization and trying to make sense of what is happening within the business environment. So it is a process. You can look at it from a process uh, point of view. And, and, and you can also look at organization as a system. So we'll try to understand organization as a system. So a system, what, a system really is an uh, a, a multi-dimensional uh, interlinked uh, with different elements, with different components. And of course, if you try to, one way to see this is to look at the input to the organizations and of course, what is happening within the business environment as well. You also want to look at the the regulations, the, the market changes and the operations aspect, the cultures, the policies, leadership issues, the some are internal to the organization, some are external to the organizations, but organizations operate within this complex system. So that is an important way to, to look at organization uh, from, from a system point of view. 
that being said, so what are the drivers? What really drive change? What are the driver for change? There are different drivers for, for change. You can be looking at sociocultural factors that are driving change within the organization. You should be looking at technology change. Uh, I mentioned issues relating to artificial intelligence, for example. You mentioned issues relating to big data, data analytics, and, and trying to make sense of this world of data that is happening. You can look at the microeconomic um, influence that is having an impact on, on organizations, right? You can look at the political uh, scene, what is happening within the political scene. So government um, influence on, on, on business. Uh, so these are happening within the external environment. But also, you also need to pay attention to what is happening within the internal environment of the organizations as well. So these can also, what is happening within the business environment, can, within the within the organization environment, internal factors like strategy, like structures, like your business models, like your people, your culture. So all these complexity combined can drive uh, change for the organization. So that being said, I have a question for you. So what major changes may organizations uh, commonly experience? What are the outcome? What do you think are the major changes that organizations commonly experience? So you think about that. So sometimes, so the, the list is endless. So you'll be looking at maybe cultural uh, changes, you could be looking at the, the uh, measures and acquisitions, new strategy, new product development, uh, new ways of doing business, business models, uh, cost reduction, for example, redundancy, uh, market changes, and maybe because of digitization of, of new medias that is happening. So there are different changes that obviously organizations usually uh, can uh, maybe encounter there could be changes in senior management teams of the organizations as well so there are the list is endless what are the forces for organizational change what is driving it so we can divide it into internal and external i've alluded to that so the internal ones are the ones that are those changes that are from within the organizations the external ones are the ones from outside the organization so they, they, they have major influence on what happens within the organizations and the way the businesses operate. One way to look at this, maybe Brexit, for example, is an, is an external force to, to organizations because businesses need to adapt, need to think, away, think about ways to deal with them. So the external is often, some of you are familiar with these two called PEST or PEST. You know, you're looking at the political, environment, social and technological factors or the legal um, issues as well or the environment that is happening within within the organizations or within the business environment that is having an impact on the organization. So technology changes, right? So you could be looking at uh, technology innovations, R&D spending and skills and resources that are uh, bringing about innovation that are having an impact on the organizations you could be looking at political seeing what is happening uh there you could also be looking at the economic or the social um cultural elements of, of of the of the business environment so these will have uh, courses for the organization to to want to change to want to adapt and businesses need to find a way to deal with that so think about the implication of brexit for example for uh businesses in the uk and of course or businesses within within the EU. So obviously you can look at how this is having uh, a massive implications, it's having a massive impact on businesses because businesses have to think about how, what new ways of, of, of operating, new ways of adapting to the new changes and regulations that happens within the business environment. That being said, I just want to quickly just talk to you to, around the types of external forces for change. See, so the one way to look at it is to look at five levels of environmental turbulence that have been captured in literature. So you could be looking at some form of uh, external forces that is predictable. Uh, you can look at forecastable uh, by extrapolations. You can extrapolate what, what has happened before and try to make sense and forecast what, what, is, what, what is more likely to happen. You can also look at predictable threats and opportunities 
within within the business environment you can also partially predictable uh, uh, threats and opportunities as well and the and the level five is the unpredictable surprises that happens in the business environment and then of course what are the internal triggers uh, for change what really trigger change within uh, the, the the business environment within the organization itself as the organizations operate internally what is happening what is happening within that internal functions or the organizations you're looking at all that stuff like new CEO senior managers right so failing um, organizational performance takeover divestment measures and acquisitions I mentioned that earlier uh, new marketing strategies on investments in your r and for example, new IT systems and all that declining in sales, labor shortage and supply. The wide range of factors that can really trigger the need for change within the organization. The obvious reason is why does it really matter? When, why, why should we care? Because if business don't respond appropriately, that business may uh, cease to, to operate. They may go into bankruptcy. So change management is absolutely important in that context. You can look at Microsoft and the new CEO, for, for example, Microsoft recently uh, have a new CEO, have a, a, a bolder ag agenda and visions for Microsoft in, the, in, in ways in which Microsoft needs to adapt and, and, and needs to listen and needs to collaborate and obviously also needs to navigate in new ways of, of doing things. And you, you, you might be wondering why do Microsoft have to uh, adapt, have to navigate, have to uh, make sense of uh, uh, the company's uh, uh, features, for, for example. And of course, it is an important one for, for everybody within the business environment to look at things that they can do. And are there, are the internal forces influenced by external forces? So that's the question. So are the internal forces that is happening within the, within the organizations, are they influenced by the external forces? The answer to that is yes, they, they are influenced, um, they influence one another, uh, one, one way or the other, we want to look at it. Rising societal level of education, for example, are more uh, competitive job, job markets, that is external issues, may impact uh, the employee turnover um, rate, for example, the rate at which maybe employ, uh, an, an employee leave one employer for, for another. And then, of course, uh, if you also look at maybe aging population, they can cause uh, labor shortages, which may lead to increased uh, wages and operational costs for the organization. So they, they, they one way or the other, they, they tend to shape each other. So that being said, what is the summary so far? We've looked at organizational change. We'll look at the definition and why it matters. We we'll also see change uh, as something that is constant in, in, in business. And we also emphasize some of the uh, external and, and internal factors that may trigger change process within the organizations, where, whether you have a new CEO, whether there's a declining in sales and all that. So this can have an impact. This can trigger the need for change within the organizations. And of course, we also look at external forces for change and how it can affect internal forces for change to try to explain that as well. So in this part, very exciting, quickly, I'm just going to cover that. Uh, we'll be looking at the change process. So the learning outcome in this part is to look at the, to examine uh, the different types of change and also to, to look at the uh, approaching frameworks and model for managing change. And of course, we'll try to wrap it up with some of the success factors for implementing change. So what, the change process, the change process is, is something that uh, it's, it's really excitement because you're looking at the current state, you then go on to transition state, you're then looking at the future state of the organization, of the business, right? But when you're looking at the current state, what, you, what you're looking at is how things are done today, how things are currently done now or how things are done today right so in the transition stage you move to how you 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 you're thinking about how to move from your current to your future stage and then of course you're also looking at the future stage where you're looking at how things will be done tomorrow right so if there's a declining state in or, or sales in the organizations businesses are thinking about how do we transition to a, to a, a time where uh, our, our sales figures are rising and it's sustainable and we're profitable 
tomorrow. So, so that's that's the, that's the change process, right? And the types of change. So the literature covers. If you you come across different terminologies in the literatures explaining different types of change, right? So, so there's the idea that uh, you could have a convergent change where you're looking at fine tuning and doing better. You could be looking at incremental small changes for minor environmental uh, change. Um, you could also be looking at uh, discontinuous or frame uh, breaking, right? Industry discontinuities and, and all that that can have product life cycle may be shifted. Uh, so, or the internal company uh, dynamic in terms of maybe restructuring, this would be classified as a discontinuous uh, type of change. Other things to, to also emphasize is that you will find the type one, which is the fine tuning, for example, where you're looking at maybe refining your policies in type two, where you're looking at incremental adjustment, trying to expand your sales, maybe territory, for example. And of course, you also maybe you're looking at mo uh, modular transformations, which is also another way to look at these major restructurings of particular departments uh, within the organization or corporate transformation. Um, maybe like branding, rebranding of the organization or reforming organizational uh, missions. So to look at that, but the, the type of changes were uh, from uh, the work of uh, uh, Cronin in 1992, also looking at smooth or uh, incremental that try to evolve slowly in a systematic and predictable way. And, and of course, we also know that other, other ones have been mentioned. There, there are some overlap within, within the that points to, to change. So the major type of change um, have been highlighted. You have, have looking at the bumpy, the smooth, and the discontinuous uh, uh, type of change based on the work of printing in 1993. Now, you can look at predictable change. So what does that truly uh, mean? So these are like maybe the life cycle of the organization. That organization naturally expresses what, what is called a life cycle. And in which case, the greenhouse models or the frameworks is one way to look at this, where organizations start from the entrepreneurial stage or the entrepreneurial stage to collective stage, and then move to formalizations and, and then uh, looking at elaboration stage. And of course, expected change that occur throughout the stages of an organization life cycle, these are the expected changes. They 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 they're bound to happen within uh, the organizational life cycle. And, and one way is we, we've, looked at, uh, we've looked at this before, where organizations progresses through in, from phase one, where you're looking at growth, through creativities and, and to uh, phase uh, uh, six, where you're looking at growth through alliance as well, where, where if it's not properly managed, it can have a ripple effect on the organization. So, so these are these are one ways to, to look at the organizational life cycle based on the work of Greatest 1972. So one way to look at the frameworks for managing change. So there are two main approaches. So the first one is the plan approach. So the plan approach where you, you're looking at so you, you're trying to focus on the solution oriented ways of, of doing things top down, blueprint, uh, thinking, stable solutions, abstract and concrete ways of looking of dealing with issues within the organization itself. And of course, you could be looking at the other um, part, which is a developmental approach to uh, to, to managing um, uh, change, where you're looking at, you, you focus more on problem oriented, you're looking at your existing knowledge and how you can draw from that. You try to improve your ability to manage, to manage change and looking at possibility, things that are truly possible within the organization itself. So these have a dramatic impact on the organizational uh, uh, change process itself and, and of course it can help the organization to think more carefully in terms of where they really need to be based on the abilities of the organizational members to deal with the change that is happening in the business environment itself. So when you look at plan change, um, one way to, to look at it is to say it's a deliberate um, design process uh, to really induce the intended change uh, to achieve a specific out, uh, outcome or, or, or for, for the organization. So if FEM can implement a new IT system to improve operational e efficiency, 
We've seen uh, classic examples of this that happened in during the COVID-19 pandemic. So many businesses, maybe for example, some businesses that do not have an online presence, they design tools, they design a new IT system that allow them to sell online, that allow them to take order from customers, and of course, uh, putting that structures in place for delivery process as well. So, so we've, we've seen that. There is the um, other notion that you also need to understand that you're trying to respond to new challenges or opportunities uh, presented by the uh, external business environment, um, changes to um, sugary drinks, for example, as a response to um, the tax uh, uh, sugar. So organization needs to deliberately plan for some of these like Brexit. So many organizations plan before it eventually happens. So that's something to take into consideration. So you can look at plan and, and the linear uh, change model. So there are stages in the in, in, in plan change. You you there there are different ways to look at this. Uh, you could start with trying to help recognize the need for change, and that is the starting point. We're looking at your internal and external environment. You scan the environment. You trying to make sense of what is happening in the business environment and recognize that actually we need to change because uh, our sales is declining. Um, we need new skis, we need new IT systems, or we need to, to possibly, because of uh, we don't want to go into bankruptcy, maybe we might need to merge, we might need to look at, uh, or we might need to acquire new businesses and, and all that. So you need to recognize the need for, for change and why do you need to change. So you also need to try to diagnose the, the organizational readiness for, for change, to look at trying to carry out a, a diagnosis, trying to understand what is happening. Uh, is this organization really ready for change? And are we, um, and what would be the likely um, uh, effect on the organizations, right? So, and then of course you start to then look at uh, potential sources of resistance uh, to change because it happens. Naturally, people want to resist. People don't, don't like change. So see, you, and, and then, then we want to set out the overall goals and visions for the organizations as well, and try to educate and, and, and get people on board to buy into what you're trying to, 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 to do, get people involved and identify specific change, you know, targets that needs to be achieved. That this is an important aspect of these, of, of these, uh, of these uh, plan um, stages. Now you're also looking at um, you want to clarify and design a specific change approach and techniques as well. So uh, implement those change and of course support the change process and try to evaluate the these, these are ways to, to 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 tackle it. But there are issues with plan change and what are those issues? The future is always uncertain, difficult to accurately predict, and 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 sometimes as well the issues of resistance and all that can happen. And does that mean we shouldn't plan? Does that mean we, no? It, it it doesn't mean that. Uh, but it also suggests that maybe there could be better way of of dealing with that. So typically we know that change uh, does not uh, run as smoothly or, or systematically as indicated in a plan. So that is is not something like you move from step one to step two that easily. So that is something to take into consideration because of the complexity that happens within the business environment so or within uh, the organization itself. So that is something to take into consideration. And then of course the process may not achieve the intended outcome. So that, that is something to always also uh, take into account when, when planning. Now, I just want to mention that because of that, so there are different frameworks or other models that have been suggested in literatures. And one is the, uh, the Pete Cruz um, organization development uh, models that lists about four different stage stages. And, and, the, and the first one uh, is the development of, of concerns. So you're looking at some of those uh, uh, concerns among group of people that exist um, within the organization structures and, and the procedure, which are no longer compatible with the way business is being conducted, with the way business is run. And of course, you also, also talked about the acknowledgement of the problem, trying to acknowledge the problem and own the problem and looking at more wider um, ways of dealing with this and understanding the critical problems of the organizations uh, that the organization face and try to carry out analysis of the causes and look at alternative ways of tackling these problems. And then you start to move to the other stage where you're looking at the planning and, and art um, stage. 
and at this stage what you basically doing is trying to create a, a specific change um, in, in, in the light of the, the findings, in the light of the diagnosis that have been conducted and try to set out some specific objectives in dealing with this. Uh, and this is happening now time and time again because of COVID-19 companies are really planning and acting and finding ways to alternative ways to operate and try to set objectives and re revalidate their business models. And the final um, or in part is to looking at how do we stabilize the change? How do we uh, how does the organization reward information and power systems and reinforce to be able to get the intended outcome? That being said, I just want to look at okay, why do we have resistance to change? Is change is that really important? Why do we why do we have resistance? So that's the question. So the question for you is do you uh think um what do you think are the top three uh, reasons people resist uh, uh, change. Why? What, what, what are the top three reasons that people resist uh, uh, change? Think about that for a minute. So you can look at that. So the change process typically do not run smoothly. Uh, and, and of course, resistance will, will sometimes happen. Uh, and we know that. And um, you're looking at the inability or the unwillingness to to discourse or to accept change that are perceived to be damaging or threatening to the individual so people will naturally want to resist in that context people will resist but that the two main force uh forms of uh resistance is what is classified as the, you can look at the individual uh, and hostility you can also look at the organizational inertia so let's let's look at some of the factors of um in ashes in, in organization emotional block so this is about when people feel threatened by the change and fear uh, the uncertainty that should have with it uh, so this is this is what is being referred to as so emotional block so this can obviously lead to resistance to change and there is the cultural block as well subtle ways in which uh, cultures may be hostile to, to, to the change um, itself so the managers needs to take into account take into consideration of these and you could be looking at the cognitive uh, or blocks as well, the inability to use correct information and, and language in communicating and implementing the change process itself. So this is an important one. And you could be looking at the perceptual blocks um, and then the environmental blocks. So the lack of support among employees, managers, not accepting feedback and criticism of, of the change proposals. So that's that's ways to, to look organization so the causes of resistance we're looking at the power here self-interest people fear the implication of change for themselves will i be pushed out or eliminated will i still have my job if we merge this company with another company uh, misunderstanding or lack of trust um, contradictory assessment as well you believe this we have but i disagree so all those sort of things happens and cause resistance to the change and we we've seen low tolerance as well for, for change, that people generally don't like to change. I've mentioned that earlier. So what are the further forms of resistance? So people um, focus resistance. So this is kind of uh, trying to reside in individuals due to their uh, psychological differences, such as um, attitude, uh, maybe cultural uh, issues as well. These can have major impacts uh, in terms of how people accept uh, the need for change. And the other one is to looking at the system focus resistance, where um, new systems can be complex and unfriendly to the users. So when you're trying to implement, implement change, you're trying to manage change, you need to take all this into account within the organization as well. So the other part, point is the organizational focus that you're looking at new systems uh, that do not integrate well within the organization system itself. And you can be looking at the, the uh, policies focus resistance as well. All these have been captured in the literature. The hostility that I mentioned earlier can come in different forms. We, we've mentioned that that resistance can come in different forms. And one of those is the hostility aspect when individual or group fail to accept the change initiative and often uh, time work to prevent or frustrate it. So they, they can fail to attend meeting, they turn up late, they complain about the change process and, and all that. So that happens within the organizations. 
and it can also rise from people uh, either unwilling or unable to alter the attitude and behavior and sometimes people fear the negative consequence of a change itself so that all then the question for you is to think of a change that you have resisted in your life think about that and what caused your resistance what do you think caused that what did it re resist to that change and what do you think caused it so how can resistance be overcome or managed within organization so just for wrapping up six strategies have been suggested in literature by by cultures and clergy back as far back as 1979 is still relevant today education and communication explain the need and the logic for change and, and try to get people participation and involvement, involve members of the organizations in the process and facilitation and support as well. So offering support help to those affected by the change process and negotiate and um, with, with the people that are resisting as well. And try to reach an agreement, manipulations and, and, and uh, cooperation. So giving key uh, re resistors, organizational members an important role in designing and implementing the change process is soft and then of course we saw the implicit and explicit um, cohesion for, for, for threatening job um, losses and, and, and of course maybe uh, lack of promotions exit areas and all that it is going to help to to overcome to deal with uh, uh, the change resistance that that can happen within the organization but of course the effectiveness of some of these strategies will depend on the nature of change or the nature of the organization and the or the type of employees that the, uh, the businesses or maybe have on how powerful their voices are uh, are being heard. So when you try to implement uh, change successfully, uh, you want to ensure that the objectives and details of these changes are communicated as clearly as quickly as possible to everyone within the organizations, and that's really important. The other point to make is to make sure that you appoint a project champions and try to involve staff. Uh, rather than maybe imposing the change and ensure appropriate leadership is, is shown throughout the whole process and try to create a culture of change within your organization encourage encourage it you can be that into so that's really important the other ways to look at uh, this stuff is to look at um, how organizations actually for organizations to, to move from uh, their current state which I talked about earlier to the transition and then of course to the future state so they should be able to exploit their resources at at the moment the resources that they have now and try to institute structures put up structures in place that will enable them uh, to explore uh, their resources in the future and this is what is being um, classified as organizational ambidexterity so leaders and managers may periodically destroy what was created um what was created aligned in the short run to reconstruct a new organization better suited to the next wave of competition so so this is what ambidexterity of so the learning the key learning point uh today is the various type of organizational change exists there so we know that various type of organizational change exists and that's um each um, affects you know how the business we approach the change process as so i mentioned the different types and the natures and the and the type of maybe uh, key issues or within the organizations the, the cultures within the organization the attitude and all that will have an impact in terms of the change process the other things we've mentioned is that resistance to change is extremely common in organizations they sh you shouldn't be surprised surprising when you come across resistance to change of trying to implement a new stuff in your organization and we've also emphasized that resistance to change can be managed it can be overcome if, you know, i discussed those six different strategies those are really important ways to think about this and the, the the other things to think through is that you want to use appropriate approach so organizations can effectively successfully manage change you must deploy the right tools it's not all so in certain in certain type of change so you might use the the plan or the developmental approach to change but the type of change will determine the type of frameworks or the type of approach or strategy that you, you utilize to manage the change process 
So that being said, so I would, I would there are a couple of things obviously that I can um, some some papers um, books that you can read around these. Um, you can look at you, you can look at some of some of these. I will encourage you maybe put, potentially you can look at a number of these uh, papers and, and books around around uh, change and uh, selecting the right strategy for change and dealing with change process in the organization. So this is what uh, uh, we've covered today in managing change and process within the organization. It's